She had an amazing season here. She made Pac-12 conference. We're, we're all Pac-12, ABCA honors. Just this amazing thing that took a little while, but was patient and believed in herself and did everything that we want you guys to do. So this is Carly DeHoe. And she just left Washington. Now she joined the national team. So she is the young gun trying to be an Olympian. Okay, and this, and this is Krista Armada. Dietze, yeah. that's your married name. I've been watching Krista for a long time. She played at Penn State, won two national championships there, all American, joins the national team, two Olympics, a bronze medal, a silver medal. Uh, there are other tournaments called the Grand Prix and World Cup, world champions, gold medalists in those events, the captain of those teams, being a captain of the USA Volleyball team, you have to be amazing. So here are these great volleyball players, but more importantly, great people. Chris, Krista is very involved in philanthropy and causes and helping out. Uh, less fortunately, we recently got back from Uganda where you were helping out. You know, just So, I don't know, big hearts in volleyball. I gotta fight, I gotta win, I gotta win, but bigger hearts in life. And this is their chance to talk to you for this. So let's start talking. Tell us your story. And I hope you have questions ready. Okay. Oh, and Krista, by the way, I've already talked about this picture. Uh, and I, do, I won't talk anymore, and I'm just going to step back. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as Troy said, um, I spent the last five years at the University of Washington. Um, when I got there, my second day of practice, I injured my knee. Um, and I was out for eight weeks as a freshman, and as a freshman, that wasn't. Yeah, you're really excited to be in college, and that isn't what you want uh, necessarily on your second day of practice. Uh, so my first year, I redshirted. Uh, we made a run to the final four with my teammates. I had a really, we had a really great team. We had big teams all in that year. Uh, some really great girls in my position. Uh, yeah, uh, we went to the final four that year, which was really exciting. Uh, my next year, uh, my second year there, uh, my redshirt freshman year, uh, I got beat out. Um, freshman came in and it's probably our pussy. Uh, she beat me out my position uh, and I was like, all right, uh, yeah, this is an easiest transition from club where I knew my role really well and my role was a little different in college. Uh, my third year made my, made my uh, presence a little bit more on the court in games. Uh, halfway through the season, I had a really big ankle injury uh, after working off in the off season. So I had a 10 month time where I was injured and uh, recovering and I couldn't play volleyball for 10 months, which I have been playing sports since I was five, so that was a bit of a bummer to not be able to compete and not be able to play the game that I've been playing since I was 14 for a long time. Um, and, and yeah, when I came back, I wasn't quite, uh, I was, didn't find myself on the court after I'd worked 10 months to try and like, be back where I was. Um, I was more of a utility player, getting a chance to come in when we maybe needed a side out point at a certain rotation. Uh, yeah, used when they needed me, but not necessarily in every game. And I was, uh, yeah, I was frustrated with that. I wanted to, I wanted to be better, and I wasn't where I wanted to be. So that right before my senior year, um, yeah, I decided that I just wanted to get to work, and I wanted to. It didn't matter if I was going to be on the court because we had the same. We didn't have any seniors graduate um, between my junior and senior year. Um, but I just, I wanted to be the best volleyball player I could, and whatever happened was going to happen, so I just got to work my off season. I worked with my coach a lot, one-on-one, -on -one, got some extra reps. Um, with my strength coach, because I was still kind of recovering from injury, and I, I needed to get stronger, uh, keep getting a little bit better that way. Um, my senior year, we, uh, based on our preseason, we were going to kind of have a similar lineup to what we had the year before, but then um, an injury happened, and my opportunity to play was going to be there for at least two two weeks based off the injury of my teammate um, and I tried not to psych myself out and just said I've been working for the last uh, seven months and my coaches had taught me a lot and I, just, I played decently in those two weeks and so I found myself on the court for our my entire senior season um, and yeah I, I had a decent senior season and had a lot of fun and then uh, got some postseason honors which, uh, yeah, I was really humbled by, really honored to get. And then this past summer, I've spent the last uh, two months in the USA gym training um, with the younger group of girls uh, for the Pan Am Cup team. Uh, and yeah, I didn't necessarily think that all those things were gonna happen to me, whether it was the injury or um, the injuries that I had, or even the successes that I had, but I think I just, 
my mindset was just kind of take it day by day and really enjoy like the people that I was surrounded with um, during my college career, which made it a lot easier. Uh, Bailey Tanner and my teammates, and we had uh, a really good time in college together. Um, but I think the biggest thing was like I just took it day by day and tried to get better each day, um, whether that was recovering from my injury or getting better back on the volleyball court. Uh, I think that's what helped me have a lot of success in the last year, and then hopefully keep helping me have success as I go forward into post college volleyball. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Great. Okay, so. Um, what I was thinking about, first of all, I'm really excited to be here with you guys. I love this age group. I think, um, yeah, I, I was even just talking with Troy. Um, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, actually, originally, and uh, I didn't actually pick up a volleyball until I was in seventh grade, um, just because it's just not as popular of a sport back, um, back east. So I love like the youth and, um, yeah, that you guys are, are having fun. I think, um, I'm sure you probably can attest to this. I think sometimes when, as you get older, sometimes um, it's it's harder to have fun because it becomes more of this, uh, like I have to perform, I have to perform to hopefully get a, if your path takes you, um, you know, for your coaches or your, um, maybe if you're trying to, you know, maybe you have, some of you have dreams to go to, to college um, and who knows, maybe you'll end up on the, on the USA team one day. And I think, um, I don't know, I think we're in a, in a world in a time right now where um, our, uh, our identity and uh, maybe we keep finding ourselves wanting to compare. I don't know how many of you have, uh, have phones and maybe are involved on social media, but it's like, I, I don't know, for me it's like uh, the TV or when you, social media is it, you're, uh, you're constantly sort of when you're looking at things, maybe you're comparing yourself. Um, and I, I guess I, I, I share that because when I got to, um, when I, got, I, I really had fun playing volleyball um, all growing up uh, when I was your age. And then um, even in college, um, I had, it, it was just, fun, it was fun for me. It was, um, you know, I had the balance of, of school and volleyball. And then when I got to the US team, um, it was, it became kind of a lot about volleyball. And um, I didn't know, um, you know, I, I walk into the, to the gym and um, as you guys continue to progress, you know, the girls around you will keep, will continue to get better and the, the level will be raised. And I think it's, it's really easy to, to get stuck in comparing yourselves. Like, um, well, that girl, um, you know, that girl's a really, really good attacker. And sometimes you forget, well, well, I'm a really good passer. And um, and so when I got to the US team, um, you know, I, I was, I remember my, the coach saying, okay, in order to make the Olympic team, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be able to hit at a high level. Um, I'm a middle, former middle, middle blocker. You're gonna have to hit at a high efficiency. Um, you're gonna have to be able to read setters and block a, a lot of balls, and you're gonna have to serve a good serve in the court. And um, I'm sure Troy remembers this. I, I was a really good uh, attacker, a really good blocker. And I didn't necessarily struggle with serving in college, but I just wasn't, it wasn't something that kind of came natural to me. Um, and so for the first three years on, on the national team, um, I was so focused on trying to be this great server, because I was comparing myself to these other, other middle blockers that were great servers. Um, and I almost forgot about my own strengths. Um, and I think even, you know, that, that ties into, you know, if, if you're on Instagram or Facebook or uh, maybe even in school, like it's so easy to get, to get stuck in what I don't have or what I'm not good at. And I think it's just so important to remember that, um, you know, you all have different strengths, you all have different weaknesses. And I think that's what, um, you know, when you get on teams, you know, all the different parts of what make each of you individually unique is what makes the team really special. And I think, um, you know, both from a team perspective and then an individual perspective, you know, as you continue, you know, it's great to have um, heroes and people you look up to and maybe, you know, some of the older girls that are about to come in, you're like, I want to hit like her one day or I want to block like her one day. And that's, that is great because that helps push you um, and, and brings out your competitive side and brings out 
um, you know, what, what you're working towards, having goals. But if it's if it's something where you know you're comparing, um, you know, well, I'm not there, and it brings you down, then that's that's a, that's an area where you kind of have to remind yourself. You know, you can talk about um, you know getting mindset and getting um, your mind, you know, to a place where. Um, you know, even if you're struggling, and even in those days where I was struggling serving, you know, when I would get into um, when I would get into a blocking drill or, or a drill where, where I was attacking, you know, at one point I was thinking about serving, and I wasn't even enjoying the blocking or the hitting. And I think it's just important for you guys to remember. I think just as you continue to grow and continue to learn, um, that it is a process. And um, yeah, don't. You just don't need to spend so much time um, worrying about where where you're at in comparison to one of your friends. Like try to be, just like Carly said, trying to be the best version of yourself. Um, and yeah, have goals, have have people that you look up to. Um, but I think the world just constantly wants us to compare ourselves um, to others and, and constantly look at what we don't have. Um, and and just making sure, just reminding yourself, hey, this, this, these are the gifts that I've been given. These are the, the strengths that I have. Um, and making sure you're still, you know, you're working on those and not losing yourself in, in maybe an area of weakness because that will come, um, you, you know, as you continue to work at it and then it's a process. And it might not come right away. I know you guys are probably learning a lot this week. And it might take months. It took me three years <laughs> to figure out how to serve a good serve in the court. Um, and it came, it came at the right time. There's so much out of our control. Um, it was eight months before the Olympics, and I went from almost being cut um, in like number seven on the depth charts, right? There's, I don't know, there was like seven or eight middle blockers and fighting for three spots on the Olympic team. And it was October of 2011, so this was before the, before the first Olympics. That I, it was during a water break, and I, you know, did this jump float that had worked before, um, but I had lost myself in in trying to be real, like trying to be perfect at it. And then during a water break, I like did it, and then it just took off. And then my whole game improved over um, over the course of the next four months. And then I'm starting at the Olympics. I mean, you just there's so much out of our control that you know you never know. So I think even during those times of goodness, you know, you're thinking, well, I'm not as good at hitting as this person. You know, it will come. Just continue to, to believe in the process and believe, um, you know, maybe some other things are being worked out um, before you finally get, you know, really good at a skill that, you know, you might not have been good at.